am Anne. Welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Reads. We are getting super close to the end of the year, and so I have a huge haul to show you. I have over 60 books that I have acquired in the last month that I need to show you. I do not do a lot of hauls on my channel because I don't buy a lot of books. At least I haven't this year. I have in the past, but this year I haven't. Um, so I'm going to show you everything that I have acquired in the last month. Some of it is from Black Friday, some of it is just things I picked up when I was out doing Christmas shopping, and some of it is Christmas gifts. So again, there's a lot to show you. So stick with me. We're going to go through it pretty quick. A lot of these I don't know a lot about, so I won't give you a lot of information. This is more just to show you what I have gotten. So we're going to start with my haul from Book Outlet on Black Friday. Um, this is actually the first time I have ever purchased from, Black, from Book Outlet. I've been aware of them and familiar with them. I just never had actually put in an order and then I got a little carried away on Black Friday. Um, and then I actually went through, after I put everything in my cart, I went through and deleted about half the things out of my cart. But I still ended up with 35 books. So let's go through those. To start, I picked up a few books that I've actually already read but I didn't own. Or, let me show you this first one. This is Beauty by Robin McKinley. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I have read this one and I actually did own a copy of it but it was a really ugly edition and this one is really beautiful. And so I decided to go ahead and pick up this to replace the copy that I had. Then I picked up, I think just five other books that I've already read. I picked up books one, two, and six in the Keeper of the Lost Cities series by Shannon Messenger. This is a middle grade fantasy series that I read over the summer. There's eight books total in the series. And yeah, I picked up these three, so I still have to piece together the rest of the series, but I picked up those. And then I also picked up Welcome to Night Vale and It Devours by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. These are based off the podcast Welcome to Night Vale, and I had read both of these already. I think I read them during 24-hour readathons um, earlier this year or last year, but I wanted to own copies of them, so I got these nice hardcover copies. This one is actually a signed first edition, which is cool. Okay, everything else I picked up from Book Outlet is stuff that I have not read yet. So there's a lot of middle grade. There's a lot, I mean, there's a wide variety of things. A lot of it is middle grade, though. So we'll just go through real quick everything that I picked up. So I picked up Winter House by Ben Gutterson. Gutterson. This is a middle grade mystery. Picked up The Emperor's Ostrich by Julie Berry. Someone was talking about this, and I don't remember who, but someone really enjoyed it. And, you know, it has an ostrich on it, so... There you go. I have Walking with Miss Millie by Tamara Bundy. This I haven't heard anyone talk about, but I was, before I went on Book Outlet on, on Black Friday, I was on Amazon and I was literally looking at this on Amazon because it had just popped up in my recommendations and then I saw it on Book Outlet. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. This is set in the South and I think deals with racism. I picked up two books by Roger Lancelin Green, The Adventures of Robin Hood and Tales of the Greek Heroes. I picked up the first two books in the Chronicles of Prydain, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, um, by Lloyd Alexander. This is The Book of Three and The Black Cauldron. I think I read these years and years and years ago, but I don't remember, so I decided to pick up the first two. got Murder is Bad Manners by Robin Stevens. This is the first in a middle grade mystery series that I believe follows two girls. I want to say at a boarding school, but I'm not sure that's right. But, you know, I'll let you know when I read it what it's about. I picked up The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This is a YA fantasy. I've heard really mixed things about this, but I decided to go ahead and pick it up and give it a try. I picked up two books by Kate Sarity, um, The Good Master and The Singing Tree. These came recommended to me by a friend, um, and they're both Newbery Honor books, and I think they're both from the 30s, so they're fairly old, um, but they have there's, there's a lot of good reviews on them. Someone said it's like Little House on the Prairie, but set in Hungary. So I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I will, again, let you know when I read them. I picked up two books by Claire Vanderpool, who is an author I've been wanting to try. I got Moon Over Manifest 
and Navigating Early. Um, and I've heard really good things about both of these, so I'm looking forward to giving those a try. I picked up The Glass Town Game by Catherine M. Valente, and I believe this follows the Bronte siblings on an adventure. Um, I'd heard about it, and I really liked the cover, so I decided to go ahead and give it a try. I picked up The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This, again, I believe is the first in a series um, that follows the daughters of villains, maybe? Um, it follows Mary Jekyll and, yeah, Catherine Moreau, Justine Frankenstein. So, yeah, different, the daughters of different classic literature villains, I guess. I don't know. Looks interesting. I've been curious about it, so I picked it up. I have Just One Damned Thing After Another by Jody Taylor. This is historical fiction. I think it has to do with time travel. Again, I don't know a lot. I'd heard about it. I've been curious about it. And again, I think this is the first in the series. I have a little bit more middle grade here. I picked up this entire series by William Joyce. This is the Guardians series. And these are fantasy. Um, these Each one follows a different mythological character, like childhood character, like Santa Claus. So this is Nicholas St. North and the Battle of the Nightmare King is the first one. Then you have E. Aster Bunnyman and the Warrior Eggs at the Earth's Core. You have Tuthania, Queen of the Tooth Fairy Armies, the Sandman and the War of Dreams, and then the last one is Jack Frost, The End Becomes the Beginning. Um, William Joyce wrote the Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lessmore, which is a fantastic picture book. So I had been curious to read some of his middle grade books, so I decided to just go ahead and pick up the whole series because they were cheap. I also, also by William Joyce, I picked up Ollie's Odyssey, which is a story book. It's not a picture book, but it's, you can see, it's got more, it does have pictures in it, but it's, yeah, just these longer, like, chapter stories um, about Ollie, who I'm not sure if it's a bear or a bunny. I'm not sure, but we'll find out when we read it. Okay, I picked up two books by Lucinda Riley, who writes historical fiction, um, and she's one of the authors that's on my 2020 authors I want to read. Um, and these are the first two books in the Seven Sisters series. So this is the Seven Sisters and the Storm Sister. I picked up two books by Anya Seton, who is another author that is on my 2020 authors list. I have Foxfire and The Hearth and the Eagle. These are also historical fiction. I picked up two, the first two books in the Reader Trilogy, which I've heard about, but I don't know where. I don't remember who talked about them or where I heard about them, um, but I'm kind of intrigued by them. They're, I believe they're YA. This is the first one. This is The Reader. And then the second is called The Speaker. And then the last book from my Black Outlet haul is a graphic novel. This is Thornhill by Pam Smee. Smy? S-M-Y, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. And this is a, you can see, it's pretty chunky. It's over 500 pages. And it's got these beautiful, like some full page illustrations in here. That's creepy. That's also creepy. And I've heard, there are, there are pages with words. I'm just not turning to any of them. There we go. Um, I've heard this is kind of dark and creepy. So, yeah, we may save this one for the fall. Or maybe if we get a few snow days, we'll see. But I'll pick it up sometime in 2020, hopefully. Okay, that is it for my book outlet haul. Now I'm going to show you a few things that I picked up at the used bookstore when I was out Christmas shopping. Starting with Next Year in Havana, this is historical fiction. I think it's dual timeline, um, set partially at least in Cuba. It's been getting some buzz, but I haven't heard a ton about it, just a little bit, so I'm curious to try it. I have The Gilded Hour by Sarah Donati. This, again, is historical fiction set in the late 1800s, but I don't really know anything else. 
What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. This is historical fiction set in Ireland, I think. So there you go. Lots of historical fiction. And yet more historical fiction. This is We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. This I've heard a lot about from several different people. This is historical fiction set during World War II. I have The Firebird by Susanna Kearsley. Again, Susanna Kearsley is on my 2020 authors that I want to read. So I picked this one up, although I think this may be a sequel to something. I'll have to look that up. The Summer Queen by Elizabeth Chadwick. Again, another author on my 2020 authors. This is historical fiction following Eleanor of Aquitaine, I believe. Um, so yeah. And then I have The Wild Girl by Kate Forsyth. Again, another author on my 2020 authors list. And this is a fairy tale retelling of something. Some fairy tale. I don't know which one, but this cover is really pretty. Okay, next up, I am part of a couple online groups that do bookish gift exchanges at Christmas time. So these are books that I received in those gift exchanges. I got three nonfiction. This is Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. The Ghost Map, The Story of London's Most Terrifying Epidemic and How It Changed Science, Cities, and the Modern World by Stephen Johnston. I believe this follows a cholera epidemic. Um, and then The Power of Babel by John McWhorter. This is a history of language. Then I also received Jennifer Donnelly's Stepsister. This is a retelling of, I believe, one of Cinderella's stepsisters. I have Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which is... I've heard of it. I don't know much about it, though. I think it's kind of a dark... Is it horror? Um, but dark gothic, kind of a classic horror, I think. Mark Twain's A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. I enjoy Mark Twain. I've never read this one, and I believe it deals with time travel again. So that's a win for sure. I received Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein. I actually have read this one before, but did not own a copy. And I'm curious, actually, to read the rest of the series. So I'm happy to have this so I can reread it before I move on to the rest of the series. Then I received two others that I don't know anything about. One is Company of Liars by Karen Maitland. Um, and this is historical fiction. It says it's set in 1348. Um, and yeah, I don't know anything about it, but definitely interested in giving it a try. <clears throat> and then the last one in this category is When the English Fall, by David Williams, which I think is a post-apocalyptic, um, I think it deals with an Amish community, post-apocalypse. So yeah, that one sounds really interesting too. All right, and then my last category of books I have to show you is gifts I received, um, Christmas gifts from friends and family. So let's jump into that. I have a study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is the first of the Sherlock Holmes books, which I have never read, and again, is on my 2020 authors that I want to read um, by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So I'm excited to have this, and we'll get to this soon, and then hopefully go on to the rest of the series. I received All is Grace by Brennan Manning. This is a nonfiction and memoir. Brennan Manning is an author I have read and enjoyed. He writes theology books, um, and so I'm excited to read his memoir. I received two board books. These are part of the Baby Lit series. Um, and if you're not familiar with that series, they're these beautiful board books that take classic novels and turn them into little board books, like little primers that talk about numbers or colors or animals or, you know, all those things you usually find in board books. Um, like Jane Eyre is a counting primer, so it counts one through ten, but with Jane Eyre as kind of your backdrop. So, you know, you have one governess and two, whatever, I can't remember them all. But anyway, um, I have almost the whole collection. There's like 30 plus and I have most of them. But these are two I was missing. So I have the Nutcracker, which is a dancing primer. Um, you can see these have just fantastic artwork. And then I received Peter Pan, which is an adventure primer. So you have, you know, Peter Pan is flying. I love the artwork. Tinkerbell is exploring. The Braves are hunting. So yeah, really fun 
um, you should definitely check out these books if you haven't. If you've got young kids at home especially and you haven't looked at these, check these out. All right, I have Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetys. Again, an author that's on my 2020 authors list that I have not read. So I'm excited to have this. I have Momo by Michael End. This I received earlier in the month as an early Christmas gift. Um, and this is would be will be a reread for me, but I'm hoping to pick it up in January, actually. Michael End is the author of The Never Ending Story. Um, and this is another kind of more obscure work that he wrote that deals with the concept of time and people coming and stealing time from you. So yeah, I'm really excited to reread this soon. Then I received Star Wars from a certain point of view. This is a book of short stories celebrating the 40th anniversary of the original um, Star Wars movies. And this is a book I've been curious about. I've even picked it up from the library before, but haven't gotten around to reading it. So this is one that I will hope to get to pretty soon. And it, short stories are nice because you can, you're not necessarily in a hurry to get through the book, so I may spread this out over a few months. We'll kind of see how it goes. Then I have one more thing to show you, and that is this. This is a beautiful set of leather-bound books called The World of Tolkien by David Day. You can see, you can't see. Okay, I'm going to put a picture in because on the side creates this beautiful picture of smog. Um, kind of embossed on the leather, and it's gorgeous, and I want to show you, so here's a picture. But these six books cover kind of the history of The Lord of the Rings. So we have, the first one is A Dictionary of Tolkien. Again, you can see the beautiful leather working on the cover. And so inside it's kind of a history. Um, this is literally a dictionary. You can see almost like an encyclopedia kind of, um, with some illustrations. And then you have an atlas of Tolkien. Again, lots of pictures, lots of maps in this one. Third one is the battles of Tolkien. The heroes of Tolkien. The dark powers of Tolkien. And The Hobbits of Tolkien. Again, just gorgeous books with so much information. I'm really looking forward to reading through these in the next few months. I wasn't planning on doing a reread of Lord of the Rings this year. because I just did one last year. Um, but after I get into these, I don't know, I may have to pull out Lord of the Rings and read those again too. But it's just a gorgeous, beautiful set that I'm super excited to have. Uh, that is it. I think we're at 65 books total that I've acquired in the last month. So that's gonna, you know, shoot my TBR number up quite a bit. But yeah, I'm super grateful to have such easy access to books. Um, and again, a lot of these books were as were I received as gifts or I got very, very inexpensively. So I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to do that. So yes, this will be the last haul for a while. I'm not planning on hauling more books for a little while at least. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and if you have any recommendations of what I should pick up first. That is it and thank you for watching.